Excellent! Well, hello everyone, and welcome to my monthly builds series. This is my April builds video. Uh, every month, at the beginning of the month, I do a couple parts lists, part out builds, so you guys at home, if you've never built a computer before, or if you're just looking for some tips, can find some good suggestions for different builds at different price points and for different purposes. This month's builds, of course, are gonna be based on Ryzen 5 processors, which are not out right now, but they will be launching on April 11th. So I have a $1,050 budget build, and the budget, by the way, is for the tower and all the hardware inside not including mouse, monitor, keyboard, and perhaps a Windows license, but for $1,050, a Ryzen 5 1600X based system. Uh, this is a uh, six core, 12 thread processor. Uh, and that's also gonna have a GTX 1070 paired with it. And then for about $700, I have a Ryzen 5 1400 uh, build, which is a quad core with eight threads, and that's paired up with an RX 480, and that's, again, 700 bucks. So really, really good prices for these builds. Um, but if you guys are interested in actually me putting some stuff together, uh, then definitely check out my builds playlist, which I will link right over here. Uh, I, I, look, I just finished my, my March builds. It's April now. I'm actually like pretty much caught back up now. It's only the first week of April and I'm actually doing my April builds video. This is unprecedented and I'm very happy about it. Uh, of course, there is some interaction with you guys though. You all vote on what I do every month. So next month in May, I basically have a bunch of prices listed here since we're finally gonna get, be getting past this launch cycle that we've been going through the past month or two. So I really just wanna know what budget you guys are mainly looking for out there. I'll probably choose a couple budgets and do gaming PCs based on those, but please vote and let me know. And of course this month's builds, um, if it wasn't already obvious, are Ryzen 5 based system based on last month's uh, suggestions. And uh, 1080 Ti not as popular perhaps as I was expecting, but Vega is not out yet still either, so uh, we were going to go with the Ryzen 5 anyway. So let's get started with my first build. $1,050, and all these are listed over on PC Part Picker. Links to the full builds as well as individual parts are down in the video's description. Uh, so you get your 1600X, which is going to come in at $250 retail. And if you don't want to shave some money off the price of this system uh, and get it down below $1,000, definitely consider the 1600. It is still unlocked and overclockable, and you could still overclock it and get probably roughly the same performance as the 1600X. Of course, I can't say too much about that yet because they're not launched, and I'm still in the middle of testing. Uh, by the way, you should subscribe to my channel if you want to see um, my test videos when it actually comes out. Here's the lineup of uh, Ryzen 5 products, though. So again, the 1600X right up here at the top for 250 bucks. Uh, shave 30 bucks off with the 1600, and still is a six core, 12 thread part. And then for 170 or 190 bucks, you can get those quad cores. So for a cooler, since um, I'm basing my assumption off of what I got here, which is the 1600X without a cooler, so I did add a cooler. Uh, I've got the Master Air Pro 4. Bear in mind, if you don't get this one and it doesn't specifically say it's AM4 compatible, you will need to contact Cooler Master for the AM4 mounting kit for this, um, but they will send it to you free of charge, so uh, that's cool. Um, only about 40 to $45 for this one, and uh, kind of adding to the range of nice air coolers that you can get from the 30 to $45 range. Uh, you got this one, you've also got like the CryoRig H7, uh, Enermax ETS T40, uh, Be Quiet has a Dark Rock, I believe that's down in that range as well. So any of those of course will work. I'm gonna be using this Cooler Master Master Air Pro 4. For a motherboard, we have the Asus Prime B350. I definitely would recommend a B350 motherboard if you're going for one of the Ryzen 5 processors. You can do an X370, of course, as well, but they do tend to charge at least a good 30, 40 bucks more per board for that. This one comes in at 100 bucks, and uh, as you can see right here over on Newegg, since they didn't tend to have good pictures, uh, it's got four uh, DIMM slots for memory. Uh, it's got a good PC, I am mean, sorry, it's got a good M.2 location, which you might be able to see, which is right here, actually above the GPU, not stuck in below it where it's gonna get too warm. And other than that, pretty unique look, black and red. You're not gonna be able to see it inside the case that I chose, but uh, other than that, it's an Asus uh, board, so you know it's gonna be pretty good quality and all, and that should get the job done for you. And again, uh, less than 100 bucks. For memory, I wanted to make sure that we were compatible and that you could potentially run at a higher speed. So I've been sticking with this Corsair Vengeance kit because it's the one I've used. You can easily run this at 2933 on a Ryzen platform, and it's already been validated across most of the motherboards that I've checked. So that's why I've stuck with it. Don't rule out other kits, especially Especially if you can find something reasonably priced that's 3200, 3400, 3600 speed, because getting faster uh, memory speed with Ryzen, if you can get it dialed in, is very helpful. 
For an SSD, I have a 240 gig SSD, and I did this via a parametric filter. Who knew that Zotac made SSDs, but hey, at least it's got a pretty cool looking design. Uh, if you're interested, check out the parametric filter and you can see other options that are kind of down in the same price range. Basically, my goal is get yourself a 2.5 inch 240 or 256 gig SSD, and you should be able to find that for 70 to 80 bucks. Get your operating system on, on that and a few games. And then I typically don't include mechanical drives with these builds because I find that most people have one of those lying around. Uh, so you grab one of those, format it, and drop it in your system so you have some additional storage. Or if you really do need a mechanical drive, you can get a one or two terabyte drive for 30 to 50 bucks. For a graphics card, I have a GTX 1070. The one that's chosen here is the Zotac 1070 Mini, uh, which is a nice little card. Um, definitely gets the job done. Again, I'm using the parametric filter here, so I just wanted to find a GTX 1070 uh, for the most reasonable price. And you can get those in the $330 to $360 price range. Actually, $335 for that Zotac card, so that's definitely the, uh, the best deal right now. You got Gigabyte and EVGA and uh, other options down here too, though. So if you find one that's a good price or that has a rebate or something that you find will match it, and of course will fit in the case, then uh, go for it. For the case, I have the old standby NZXT S340, black and red. This is just a very solid case, looks really nice, and it's only $70. I was actually trying to find something that maybe was a little bit less expensive than this, but I mean, for the price and for what you get, it's really tough to beat the S340. There are a few other options down in that range, of course, but since we already had kind of a black and red motherboard, uh, and uh, did I mention that you wouldn't be able to see the motherboard? I was kidding about that. You will be able to see the motherboard with this build. With the cheaper build, it's uh, not a Windows case, so you won't be able to see it. But uh, get yourself an S340, 70 bucks. Good deal. Uh, and then finally, we have a power supply, 650 watt EVGA. Went with 80 plus gold for this one because I wanted a little bit better quality. Uh, and even then, you don't have to pay too much. $73 for this one, even with a $10 mail-in rebate in the $70 to $80 range. Uh, and I chose this one because it's an EVGA, 650 watt. Uh, again, gets the job done. Partially modular, but uh, the cabling is all black, as you can see right here, so it will match and uh, 80 plus gold means it'll, you'll save a little bit on your power bill as well. And there's my $1,050 build. Uh, and I wanted to compare this to the $1,200-ish build that I did uh, that was four or five months ago now, also in an NZXT S340. But now you can get a six core 12 thread processor and still get that GTX 1070 in there and come in 150 bucks cheaper uh, than you would a couple uh, well, just like five, six months ago. So that's pretty cool and definitely one of the benefits that I was looking for and hoping for when Ryzen launched was just getting the capabilities of a nice thousand dollar system within the thousand dollar range and still being able to fit high-end stuff like uh, GTX 1070 and of course your Ryzen 5 1600X. Next we have a $700 Ryzen 5 1400 build. This is paired up with an RX 480, but man, 700 bucks. And this is gonna be a nice fast gaming system, suitable for 1080. You could even do 1440 with this system. Of course, uh, at the heart is again that Ryzen 5 1400 CPU. This is the lowest end one for $170 from the Ryzen 5 line. But again, all of them are overclockable. So I wouldn't be surprised if you can take uh, the Ryzen 5 1400 and overclock it and get basically in the same range as you would expect with 1500X. Uh, for less money, of course. For the motherboard, I actually had a pretty tough choice. I was looking at all these different motherboard options that were B350, Micro ATX, down in the $70 to $80 range, and I ended up going with an Asus again. I, I was again trying to find some other options. There's a Biostar and an ASRock and a couple others that are down there, but they all had compromises that I wasn't quite happy with. Either, for example, the M.2 slot was tucked under the, uh, the, the actual PCI Express slot, um, which I found to be kind of stupid. Uh, here it's in the right place on this ASUS board. Um, several of them were missing expansion slots, which, which I found to be kind of silly for a micro ATX board. These do have some 1X slots, so you can get them in there. Uh, I think they're actually routing most of your extra PCIe lanes to the M.2 right there. This one also has four DIMM slots. Quite a few of the other ones in this range only had two. So based on all that, I uh, upped it to about $90 budget for the motherboard and went with this ASUS one simply because of uh, what's available, where it is on the board, and um, I do want to point out that the reviews from this, at least on uh, Newegg, are not spectacular so far, but I do believe that quite a few of these motherboards have been going through some growing pains, and EFI updates have been helping to solve a lot of those issues. You should still be able to overclock on this board um, with an EFI update, at least. 
Same memory for this uh, system. Once again, 8 gig kit DDR4-3000. I just know it's gonna work. Oh, I'm sorry, not quite the same memory. This is an 8 gig kit instead of 16, but 8 gigs you should still be able to get by with. And uh, again, four DIMM slots, so you can add eight more if you decide to in the future. Um, again, I went with the, uh, the the parametric filter for storage. So again, the choice here based on that would be the Zotac SSD, but you can like get an OCZ Tryon 150 for also 70 bucks or another Zotac drive. I didn't know Zotac had so many SSDs on offer. Look, you can even get this SK Hynix, which is all white, which actually is a really cool uh, design. I, I like that SSD. That's what we did the white build with like quite a few years ago. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I got the Zotac again, 240 gig SSD in there. Uh, and then video card, again, I went with the parametric filter. Choice, again, for this one is gonna be the MSI RX480 Armor. But again, right around the 220 to $240 range, quite a few options from MSI at XFX, Asus, Gigabyte. So check those all out and see which one you like the best. Don't get a reference design. Get something that is a, an aftermarket design like this MSI one because uh, they have better coolers and uh, they're gonna keep temperatures down and potentially allow you to have better overclocking as well. Next, we have a case, the Thermaltake Versa H15. This is a micro ATX case, solid reviews. It's about 40 bucks. It's gonna get the job done. Again, it's not a side panel window on there or anything like that, but plenty of ventilation. And uh, again, I, I, I went through several of the reviews on this before I chose it because um, they're all pretty solid. They're like, you know, there's nothing super special about this case, but it's got some dust filters in there. Uh, it's got everything where you need it to be. It's micro ATX, so it fits. And uh, yeah, there's, there's your case. Uh, finally, we of course need a power supply once again. Once again, one with EVGA because it's just, I don't know, <laughs> when I'm looking at the price and what's there and what's available, uh, this is a pretty good deal. Less than 40 bucks. Uh, even again, another $10 mail-on rebate. And you guys can't see it because I'm blocking it, but there it is. Um, and the cabling on this one is not good. You do have ketchup and mustard going on, so bear that in mind, it's not gonna be pretty, but it's 500 watt, it's 80 plus bronze. It's gonna get your system up and running and you're gonna be good to go with a $700 quad core eight thread uh, system with, a G with an RX 480 in it. That's, that's really nice for 700 bucks. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned because not only am I doing builds, I'm gonna build one of these builds, probably the 1600X uh, based one because I already have that on hand. Although I think I might be picking up a 1400 as well because I feel like that's a very compelling chip. I wanna see how it overclocks. Uh, finally, if you haven't already subscribed, you should because uh, Ryzen 5 reviews are coming really, really soon. April 11th, again, is the launch date for these processors. Leave me some comments in the comment section. Let me know if you have any suggestions, things you would add to or take away from these builds, or feel free to post your builds parts list down there as well if you have suggestions or other ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.